Welcome, welcome. I'm back streaming Dragon Age. Um, if you watched my last video, I actually just finished killing Broodmother and I came back here because as I was like looking to see how much longer I had to finish Paragon of Her Kind, I found out that there's actually something I've never actually done before. And so I'm going to do that first and then probably go to camp and get rid of a bunch of stuff in my inventory, change my party maybe, and then I think we'll finally get a finish Paragon of Her Kind, probably today. So what I'm doing now is getting this sword called Ageless, I think. Sounds like, I think it's like a really good two-handed weapon, and since my warrior is a two-handed warrior, um, yeah, I kind of really want it. So I guess you stand on this plate, and then you put another party member, they go through that uh, throne room area, and then there's a pre ple bleh, pressure plate over here and have my people on the wrong spot. I thought it was these things that you stood on. The little square things. Apparently not. Um, and then you click on the throne. Wherever that is. And your party gets teleported. And then you get to kill a dragon. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done this. I thought I had, but pretty sure I haven't. That throne right there. Is that the throne? Yes. This is the throne of Orzammar. Uh. On my way. Caged in stone. Wait, okay, now what? Arrow shaped. Stand on each side of the arrowhead to activate two more. On each side of the arrowhead? So, like that? No. <laughs> like this? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> I don't get it. What it the heck? Called. It's not working. Oh my god. Is it bugged? What is it? Oh? We might want to be very careful oh, here. Yes. <laughs> nice. Oh, right. How about you then? This will be very easy, though, actually. I thought it was going to be more difficult. Easy. Now, give me my and weapon. Yeah, that's way better. Way more damage. Critical chance. Armor pen penetration's not as good. Or the strength modifier, but that's alright. Messy kills. Ooh, weakens nearby dark spawn. Oh my god, I should have gotten this before I went in the deep roads. Oops. Damn. Plus four damage versus dark spawn. Don't know that I want the increased hostility and intimidation, but that's all right. So as you can see, I have Christmas lights up. Exciting. But I will hopefully soon be in a different room because we've had a I've I had a plan. I understand the swamp witch is out to slay its own mother. Entirely in self-defense. So it claims. 
It could not have been its plan from the very beginning, then. I knew nothing about my mother's intentions prior to finding the book. It was your notion I arranged that. Unnecessary, <laughs> considering it is the only one who can read the book. It could just as well be a journal or a book of recipes. Would you like me to teach you how to read the book? Then you can see for yourself. <laughs> now it is testing me. <laughs> well, do you care enough to learn or no? No, I do not care. Then leave me be. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> I hate that. Criticize someone, distrusting them, and then you're not even gonna bother to actually Show like some pity for learn. A poor old man. Isn't there an easier way to get back to camp? To travel? Big battle out by winter's breath, I hear. So it seems. I got a cousin in Ban Theron's army, too. Haven't heard if he's alive yet or not. Probably not. Terran Loghain carved through him like a hot knife, I hear. That isn't good news. Poor sods. Okay. As I was saying, <laughs> so I um, have had a plan for one of the rooms in our house to turn into a gaming room for myself. And I'm finally actually working on that now. Um, where is it? There it is. And I'm hoping that sometime next month I'll be moving in there instead of sharing this with my husband. So That's exciting. I'm painting the walls black. Right now it's yellow. I frickin' hate it. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we're going to make people angry. What do you need now? <laughs> do I even have anything I can ask him? Oh, just wrong one. What do you need now? He hates me. If you really have to, go ahead. <laughs> Don't think there's anything. Such as they are. Yeah, no. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need now? <laughs> Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Because I think one of those I am. is like, there's nothing left. Again? To ask. I'm game. <laughs> I'm <we? laughs> Yeah, that one. So. Here I am. Could ask him about being an assassin, I think is what it was. Or we could just not talk to him. If you're new here, I use tarot cards to make all my dialogue choices, all the in-game decisions. I would use it to make my parties. So this I've already had shuffled a long time ago and I just haven't used it for anything other than this game. So it's been pre-shuffled and I'm just gonna keep going with what I have. So drawing from the top where we left off, Ace of Swords, Ace is one, so we'll go ahead and ask oh, him that. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Do you actually enjoy being an assassin? And why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antiva. You are respected, you are feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? <laughs> Nine of Cups. Can you even see that? I feel like I'm so far away. No, you're probably right. This would be three, six, and then nine. I often find myself the instrument of fate, ending these lives for one necessity or another. I console myself with the notion that most of them had it coming. <laughs> as far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed, the pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. That's gruesome. Three again, three fertility. <laughs> That's a bit sick. <laughs> it is? Perhaps you are right. I've been told from time to time that I'm a sick, sick man. Often in bed, oddly enough. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow, of course. 
having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity, the rules, oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? Mm -hmm. Five tradition. So, four, five. Handsome elf like you? I can think of a few things. Oh. By the way, keep in mind, our warden, her name is Gertrude, and she is like, I don't know, 80 years old? <laughs> so her saying that, that's like a cougar. <laughs> Really? Like a really old cougar. <laughs> I can picture you doing a few things yourself. Oh. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But it is pleasant enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. Oh, minus one. Damn. Yes? I don't know if she has anything to well, talk about. Well, here I am. Um. Yes? Okay, we'll, we'll ask it. I think I've already worn out that one, though, too. One of magic. I guess we'll find out. Well, here I am. You are a traveling minstrel. Do you have tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Not in the Inquisition. She doesn't like telling stories. Have I not done these already? Must not have, I guess. I don't know. Okay, 13 of wands. I'm gonna ignore five. Queen is, uh, 13. So, 4, 12, 13. Tell me about Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin, and it is with the sin that they tainted the Golden City, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the Darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. I'm pretty sure that the Tevinter Magisters probably just unleashed something that they shouldn't have. Not because the Maker, or not because they were full of sin, but just because they were idiots. <laughs> oh, zero beginnings. Zero, it means I get a pick. Oh. For, do you know any Ferelden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago, it always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Ooh, ooh. Three of Cups. I met Flemeth in the Kokari Wilds. Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devour of men. Flemeth. Mother of witches. Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mists. Yeah. Eight of Wands. They probably just had the same name? No. But, alright. <laughs> I suppose that's possible. But why would one adopt the name of a feared abomination? Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Nine of Swords. 
I don't have time to discuss Flemeth right now. We were asking her about stories. Fair enough. I can tell the tale some other time. Alright, how many of these are we gonna do? Princess of Wands. Princess is 11. And Princess 12. So... There's another story I wanted to hear. Which one? One or two. Three of Swords, so one. Do you know anything about the Dalish? I know a little about your people, but I may be misinformed, and I would hate to offend you. Oh, that's nice. Five of Cups. Three for five. I would not be offended. We'll see I have about heard that. a little about how the Elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the Elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great Elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the Elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed. But the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south and settled there in the land of their own. Hmm. Kind of sounds really similar to Solas. Plus, there's a picture of Shartan and it looks a lot like him. But maybe not. Who knows? King of 14. Maybe we'll find out soon. King is 14, so... 12, 13, 14. But the humans had to take that from us, too. The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry, and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The chantry says the elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The Chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the Elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the Winter. During the exalted march of the Dales, the Elven cities were sacked and the Elven state completely dissolved. Some of the Elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans, and instead became homeless wanderers. There were the elves of the Dales, the Dalish. Sad. Uh, ten, eleven, strength. What do you know about Andraste? Andraste was the maker's chosen. The Maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an Hogren earthly husband background. and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the Maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the Maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. Yeah, I'm guessing that wasn't really the Maker. <laughs> that was probably... Uh... Something like a spirit or a demon, or maybe a fade walker like Solus, but I don't think it was Solus. But I don't think that was the maker, <laughs> if that's true. King of Swords is 14, <clears throat> 12, 13, 14. How did Andraste die? Alas. It was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Maferath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, 
and Mafarath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Mafarath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinta. Six of Swords. All right, I've heard enough. <laughs> we can discuss this another time if you wish. Let's just move on. That was already way more than I expected it would be. Stop wasting time, Warden. I'm not here to chat. Okay, okay. Sorry. I don't think there's anything to talk to Morgan about. I await your command. Just kidding. There so, is. full of questions, are you? <laughs> I await your command. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Right, so I await three your things. command. Going to ignore that one cuz the one there is I think like kicking her out, maybe possibly 19 the sun. So 3 uh 18 19 I'd like to ask you something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> So, I'm not going to bother with that. Two or three, since she's our only mage. <laughs> I had to kill Wynne, so. Only one mage here, anyways. Four of Pentacles. Is Flemeth really what she seems to be? <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? A nutty old bat. Uh, eight, Justice. Human? Oh, she certainly was human. Once. Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience? Well, Leliana just told me a lot. Fourteen of Pentacles. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I've heard a little of it. No doubt such a tale has mutated much over time and telling. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. Fifteen, Temptation. Um, Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And the point would be... It was you who made the query of Flemeth. <laughs> Why ask if you do not wish to know? I think I'll just say, tell me your story. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful, a fair lass in a land of barbarian men, the desire of any who saw her. Seventeen, the star. Yes, I've heard this part. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osen the Bard and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that twas Osen who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous Lord who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osen and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osen agreed. Gross. Two of Wands. Lameth must have been angry. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. 
Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. Didn't really remember that part. Four of Cups. She spoke to spirits or demons? Spirits first, and twas they who slew Conobar. Flemeth did not turn to the demon until... much later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. Of course. Three of Wands. I love how these are the last couple have been of Wands. I guess except for the last one, but being kind of defensive, essentially. Of course, oh my god, of course Flemeth would say that. You would be talk. surprised at how little my mother cares for what I or others think of her past. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner, and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people, and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. Interesting. Ten, fortune. Six, twelve, eleven, ten. Aren't abominations usually insane horrors? How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. I saw a theory that Flemeth, a.k.a. Mythol, might not really be Mythol. That it might be a spirit or actually a demon of vengeance. So that's interesting, especially after hearing that. Maybe Flemeth slash Mythol is actually just a demon. Demon of vengeance. Plot twist. Ten of Wands. <laughs> that all sounds like hogwash. If that is what you think, so be it. I have thought so on occasion myself, but there it is. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. Hmm. Oh, wait. 10, 11, 12, sacrifice. 12. Oh, keep your curiosity to yourself. <laughs> After we just asked her all these questions. Shall I say the same the next time you <laughs> grow curious, then? Have it your way. Oh my god! Negative 23? Why? <laughs> Damn. I was not expecting that. Oops. Whoops. <sighs> Everyone in my party is going to hate me. Okay, do I have anything? It doesn't perhaps? have better things to do. One or two of the previous thing. So, Prince of Wands is 12, so never mind. On then, 